table and then we'll do some more with it in a moment. Uh, but anything that someone at, at the state level or at a local level in Pennsylvania could have influence, if you think it should be something the Green Party should be taking action on, toss it on the floor. It's okay if you read one that someone else already did. It just means that more people like it. Do you guys want our town platform to help all of if you think those things should also be in our state plan, we'll start it off. I'll one. give you a whole, <laughs> <laughs> whole package. I'm, I'm actually going downstairs. So we're going to post these okay. and post post-it notes. So well, okay. Okay. Well, I'll I'll talk talk the whole time is the most important thing. Then you're actually going to have to make the Kristen? Yes, sir. Would you mind just quickly saying what exactly it is that you guys are doing at the moment? Just yep. So we are uh, in the process of revising our platform. It has not been revised since 2010, so some stuff is globally outdated. Um, and just we want to restructure the way it looks to fit it into our four pillars. So right now everybody's doing the brainstorm of what they think should be involved, and then we're going to do some sorting and some writing Very and knock as much out as we can today. Very good. about two more minutes to toss down as many books as you can. to our lovely TV board and tossing on here which pillar your different options fit under. So you can grab your own post-its, you can grab other people's post-its, but we want to sort these into the four pillars and then we're going to do some grouping to see which platform points we can work on today. And, um, so I'm going to steal some people's, but put your own up, put some other people's up. If you get one that's the same, if you want to put it next to that.
And if you disagree where something goes, feel free to move it. We can argue them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
What's your last name, Steve? Grumbine. One more time. Grumbine, G-R-U-M-B-I-N-E. Okay, we came in a little bit late, so I didn't hear like your nah, intro. Yeah. Who are you? What do you do? Uh, well, I'm the founder of Real Progressives. Um, and uh, we're an adjacent group, if you will, um, that, that is very supportive of most of what you all support as Greens. Um, we come at it from an economic perspective. Um, so, and these guys, quite frankly, tried to get me to run for Senate uh, on the Green Party ticket. Really? Yeah, they tried to recruit me a while back and just life wouldn't allow for it. It's such is the way it is. but. Uh, Tim Runkle and I and, and others have developed a friendship and yeah, you know a real close working relationship in different ways. So it's nice to be able to be amongst people that are trying to make a change. So oh, definitely. this is yeah. this is nice. Okay. Well, nice to, you up nice to meet you. Yes. We'll start the heavy lifting. Yeah. Nice to meet you. You as well, absolutely. Your name is coming up. It's very, very colorful. I love colors. This is my, this is my teaching background. Sorry, Alright, so let's talk through what some of our big buckets are up here. So the peace chunk. Um, we have some stuff about kind of gun control, gun insurance, ways that that could be handled. Um, a lot of stuff about community control of the police, uh, police training, uh, things like that, legalizing marijuana. So this is where I usually put this one too. But there are other people who put it over here. Uh, legalize marijuana, criminal justice perform. Reform, no death penalty, no private persons. Uh, so that's kind of our peace bucket. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, how many things do you think that really gets broken out into? I can't, I, I want to get my answer. Usually you can have three main categories and stick everything into those. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be three. I mean, I think we definitely have a lot about the community control of police. And I feel like that's a giant <coughs> bucket here. Um, and then I think there's the criminal justice reform, which could kind of include the no death penalty, the no private prisons, that kind of stuff. Um, and I think we have a lot of literature already written about legalizing marijuana, and so I think kind of repurposing that and chunking it under here would make sense. Mm -hmm. I, I like putting it there yeah. instead of under social justice, because it's really about the war on drugs. Right. Stop. It's ending the war on drugs. Yeah, and I think if we frame it that way, it makes it a lot clearer that it's, it fits there. Okay, so down into our ecology, uh, we have the clean air, clean water, or if there's a person with rights, um, so, so thinking of the environment as having rights. Um, then there's the no, no fracking chunk, and um, just in general, the, the other like non-pollution. This is not my strong point. I will let people who are better at talking about the environment write these chunks. <laughs> Social justice is where we have our heavy hitting, which I think in Pennsylvania it makes a lot of sense. Um, the building I know, we all know is one of the poor, it's one of the poor, it's the poorest big city in the country in Pennsylvania. It makes sense. So we have a lot of this here. So we have a lot of stuff about public education. Um, well, also I think yeah. there's a big pushback right now because mm -hmm. it because people are so threatened right now yeah. that, that and that's something we can't help with at the state level. Even though you know the threat is all coming from the national level, I think. I can also tell you, so I read over the Democrat and Republican platforms before today, just to kind of get a sense. Um, neither of their platforms say anything about public education except for pre-K or higher ed. They're like K through 12 is just completely missing, totally, totally missing. Uh, their national platforms. Some of their state platforms might have some stuff, but the national platform is silent. Uh, and so I think this is a big place where we can be loud about what our thoughts are um, and, and how that equates to social justice in a way that the other parties are not. Um, so then we have the piece about no cooperation with ICE, shuts down the first detention center, so rights for 
undocumented Pennsylvanians. Um, stuff about other rights, so trans rights, LGBT rights. Um, I remember saying something about uh, reparations in here. Um, so kind of our, our like identity rights. Um, so historically oppressed communities rights. Single payer health care. And then this chunk for the most part is about the Green New Deal. And I feel like we could kind of summarize that into what it means to be a Green New Deal. And another pillars are really strictly economic, right? Um, so I feel like the Green New Deal really, I mean, really touches all of them. Yeah. Um, and so I think chunking it either under social justice or ecology makes sense. Um, I think we can borrow some of the stuff Paul. Yeah, uh, Paul put some amazing stuff out. Neil, you had a lot of really great stuff for yeah. the Green New Deal as well. Um, we could chunk that we could pull in there. And then our grassroots democracy stuff is the campaign reform, um, including like the um, the voting methods as well as um, contributions, um, opening up the primary, um, public transportation in rural areas. I think you can maybe make the argument that that could fit over in like a transportation kind of plank under Second ecology. Moment. Huh? Second moment. The the public transportation? Absolutely. Because yeah. those people are basically sharecroppers in the north. Yeah. They have no way of getting out of there and they subject to one business or another. Yes, yeah. so, so social justice. Yeah, would you do social justice or you're actually democracy for ecology? I mean, I feel like it's the kind of thing that depending on what you group yeah. it with and frame it, you can so really put it in there. Worth digging it apart, exactly, you know? yeah. Uh, I mostly ask because we're going to structure it this way on our website, right? Well, what we could do mm -hmm. is we could make a section at the end that are issues that absolutely fit into all of our pillars. They affect mm -hmm. all of our pillars. and. Uh, and, I mean, in general, yeah, we don't want to just not have that structure at all because it just makes it haphazard. But I think there are some overwhelming um, issues that absolutely have to do with all of them. So far, the only one that feels like that to me is the Green New Deal. That like, really, really, really overlaps everything. And I think that public yes. transportation yes. being part of that is makes sense. Okay. Um, because I think we're going to have something that we chunk out of the four pillars, that it needs yeah. to be something that's really, yeah. Um, I, 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 I agree with that. Okay, so what I want us to do now is group up. You can do it on your own. I don't really care yet. Before we do that, I just want to make a comment on this. Because before we started this whole process of thinking how we were going to revise our platform, we took what was in our current platform and did this with it, okay? And even though social justice is really spelled in there, you have a good number of things in these other ones. When you look at it this way and try to frame it and think, well, what can I put under these? You think of other issues that maybe you didn't think of before. Because our current platform has oh, nothing to lose. Oh, nothing, yeah. yeah. I think we have something about bringing on the National Guard. Mm -hmm. And that's really it underneath. So, and it was very, it's very lopsided. The platform's you know? a wall. You know? Yeah, and they should. Yeah, and our principles should involve. Right, but, you know. right, and that's and that's kind of the difference, right, between a platform and and our values. Our core pillars are what undergirds everything we do, and then our platform gets to evolve over time with what's changing around the world. Mm -hmm. And we have not done a good job of keeping up on evolving our platform, um, which is a big part of why we're doing this. And so, when he these out to you guys, this is the structure and how we're going to do our platform rewrites. So the top of it is a title. Um, keep your title to five words or less. Something that's catchy, um, that makes people want to read your, your, it could be either catchy because it's really straightforward or catchy because it's catchy, right? But like not something that people aren't gonna understand. Um, and then just uh, pick which of the pillars it fits under. And then there's two big chunks under here. The first is a description. And what the description says is write it as if you were talking to a middle schooler. Um, newspaper articles are written at about the third, sixth grade reading level, and that's because that really is the average of where our, our electorate is. Um, the other reason I say middle schooler, how many of you guys interact with middle schoolers on a regular basis? Okay. So uh, they're curious, but they also have very short attention spans, and they think they know everything, right? So if you think of it as you're explaining it to someone who already thinks they know everything and you have to convince them of something different or 
something that you believe that they might not have ever heard of, and they have short attention span, and they are curious, so they want to hear you. Like that's the kind of tone you want to put across when you're doing your description. Um, nothing too wordy. Just get to the point. Talking to a middle schooler. Okay. And then the last part is the most important part: this action statement. So what our platform is, is it's a statement of what we are going to do when we are in office. So how are the Greens going to handle things differently? If our platform is not actionable, it's not a platform. So if the thing that you have on here, can't, we can't take action on it, it really shouldn't be included in our platform. So those two pieces, the description of what the issue is, and then the second most important part is what action will we take as Greens to enact this, this platform. Are we doing these randomly, or are you going to kind of a Ask for gonna ask years. what people want to work on. Yeah, we kind of group together. And then the very last piece, I have our 10 key values listed off here. Check off as many of them as you think apply. We're just going to use those to kind of tag our website and try and drive more traffic to it. Analytics are good. All right. So um, if you guys have stuff that you feel like you're an expert on, most interested in, kind of go around and see where people feel like they want to write on, and we can do some strategic grouping. I don't mind if you were going around either, but I want us to knock out as much of this as we can today. Um, our goal is that we're going to do the rewrite over the next few months, as much today as we can, and then do the vote on it at the January meeting on our new platform. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, which one that you? Um, the ecological stuff. Ecological stuff? Yeah. Uh, Honey, you have a chunk of the education? Education. education. Mm -hmm. I, I'll probably in that part too. Um, I don't know if you meant that. But I, Kevin. Kevin. Right, yeah, that's Kevin. <laughs> 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 Did you ever talk that you're. I'm not an expert, but I. Peace. Peace. Okay. Any particular part <coughs> underneath? Um, I, I tend to like the, the local stuff. Like, I, I, I even think that domestic violence should be. Mm, that's good. You're right. That's kind of a huge decision. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what okay. interests me. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Jim? Um, probably social justice, uh, health care, probably more so. Okay. Stuff. Okay. Lady? Uh, gun uh, ammunition insurance. Please. I don't know that we've had it. Definitely. Education. Education. Do you want to work with Wendy? Or do you want to do something else? Or I'm okay with you guys doing the same thing. I just feel like if we're doing the same thing, we should work together on getting Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, do I hand you one yet? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go here. And sure. Um, probably the local community of policing. Did somebody already said that? Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of torn between the, 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 the social justice, economic, and the, the police issue. Community policing, and you have, you know what? Like, I feel like you have, you have a good background for being able to speak to that. Uh, well, if you don't want to talk about it, I don't want to talk. Okay, right. I'm not an expert, so I, I think you might team expert. up with Neil on the ecological stuff. Cool. All right, everybody, feel good it's about what they're working on. Yeah. You can also bug people while you're working. You don't have to be silent. We don't work in silence. Does everybody have a camera? I'm watching books here. I have some more pens down here. And Kristen on the table this morning, my last board, there's not really the fill around. I left my film on here while I was in the office. Anybody need a pen? I'm not sure. It's like there isn't like a position that is just for doing things for you in the world. But it's not pretty, though. Mm -hmm. I've got to get them back. It's in my journal. Well, yes, um, when you when you're elected, then you would have a cabinet and you would be president. Mm -hmm. um, so, for the party. Okay. Can okay. you know, I elect to secure? Oh, I'm not sure. I, I didn't mean to. I believe you need a pen. Yeah, three issues. Oh, no, or this one. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. You can get a silver. Um, we can be cycling and all of the things that I have. So, is she going over there? Oh, I was just wondering if she's still. So, somebody in the party has kind of overseen that? Not free education? No. Free higher education? Yeah. Okay. When you were talking about education, I'll move right here too, so I can see who we are. Okay. Okay. So, I'll give you two different things. I was doing free education in. 
Higher education and local community oversight. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I should not write things because no one can read my writing. What's that? So, what I'm thinking about in general is putting something down that's actionable. Mm -hmm. So, real quick, this is a good while they're doing it kind of thing. So, what exactly is going on while you're you're developing your platform? You're revising your platform. Last time you all actually did it was in 2010. So, you're actually looking at not only revising the issues you're covering. But you're also looking at how they tie to your 10 values, and they're looking at how the, you can tag those in your website to actually produce value, not only for your metrics, but for people to be able to tie this stuff together and see that there's a cohesive... Right. So, I think one of the things that's really special about the Green Party is that we do take a holistic approach towards, towards our solutions for policy. Um, so seeing that these things overlap on our values, they're not just kind of a, in a box that this one solution makes a big difference. Right. Well, you know, I liked something that you said, and I wanted to drill down on it. And it's probably not the way you anticipated this going, but you invited me to here. <laughs> So um, when you think about this, one of the things that jumped out at me was if it's not actionable, it doesn't belong in the plan. And so much of what the left, and I'm part of this, so we're clear, um, we, we, we tend to focus on these pie-in-the-sky ideals that are absolutely not actionable. Some end state that has no, no, no place in right here, right now, we can't do anything with this might fit in our ideals, but it doesn't fit in our platform. Talk to me a little bit about how you would differentiate between the two. Yeah, I mean, I think we do, it's really important to have those value statements as well, and for us, we have those. Those are our four pillars, um, and those are unchanging, right? Those are the things that ground us, that keep us rooted, um, but when we're talking about an actual platform, what we actually want to accomplish day to day, if it doesn't involve something that we can actually do, um, then we're not talking about anything, right? I mean, we can have a value, we can say we want to accomplish grassroots democracy, but if there aren't steps along the way that we can take to get there, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and so our platform, the meaning of the platform, should be those actionable steps that we take. And so for like grassroots democracy, we want election reform, we want corporate money out of campaigns, we want to move towards free voting so that we're not in this constant duopoly first past the post kind of system, um, we need to come up with things that are steps towards these big ideals that we're all on. So, you know, Pennsylvania is obviously founded on fracking. I mean, it's tremendous with the uh, uh, the the shale. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the Marcellus Shale. Yes, I mean, so much of the roadways are funded by this. They've interwoven this so deeply into the government that it's almost like to pull it out is it's like you're going to either poke your eye out or you're going to stab yourself in the heart. One or the other. There is no pain-free way of extracting this. How, how, how do you all foresee things like this? How would a great exercise like this work to address very, very difficult subjects like that? I mean, and I think that's one of those, that's a really good example. Um, when we, back in, when we, when we first got elected, um, he campaigned big on having fracking become a taxable thing to fund um, and our line was you can't if you start there it's a slippery slope you're never going to get fracking out if you start taxing it um, and so i think there there is that like standing firm on fracking is destroying our environment we absolutely can't do it but then we have to have other alternatives right because we have become so dependent on fracking and um, we've really built our economy around it we have to have other options and for us that other option is um, having a green economy um, and building that in place and so switching out the jobs that are fracking jobs for jobs that are um, creating sustainable energy around the state 
So you've got Lancaster against pipelines, obviously is a very important thing here in the Pennsylvania area. How, how closely do you all work with groups like that to develop ideas and considerations for your approach? I mean, do you would take that into advisement? Where, where, where does that play into your... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we tr Lancaster um, against pipelines is probably one of the groups that we are we're fairly closely anchored with. Um, sometimes it's hard. A lot of times um, those organizations are taking money from Democrats and they don't want to talk to us. Um, but as much as we can, um, we really do work with them. We're, we want to work with the boots on the grounds organizations because they're the ones who can who can uh, I mean you heard a lot of people said I'm not an expert in this but I care about it right? right and so the more we can talk to those experts to help flesh out what are those actionable steps that we should take to fix things um, so one of the things that I also heard was gun control yes. and so obviously in the state of Pennsylvania you set your school calendar based on the hunting cycle yeah. uh, you know everybody's like talking about how their grandpa's gun was handed down to Bobby and Bobby was handed down to Susie and so forth yeah. this is a really big part of central Pennsylvania living much less larger Pennsylvania I mean the deer hunter you know everything about guns in general is very intrinsic with Pennsylvania culture mm -hmm. How does a green, how does a progressive survive and put forward meaningful legislation that addresses not only the concerns of violence, the concerns of gun ownership, but at the same time, taking into account the sensibilities of the actual local voters that may be very progressive on every other issue, but have a very, very deep relationship to guns. Um, so I'm going to speak for myself here and not necessarily speak the party line. I think this is actually one of the places where the Green Party is, I wouldn't even say divided. I just don't know that we have a party line on this. Um, we have people from all those different demographics. I grew up in Texas. My family is hunters. I couldn't imagine telling them that I'm going to take away, like, I mean, I have family who literally lives off of the deer meat that they that they that they hunt for. Um, I couldn't imagine telling them that I'm taking away a source of their livelihood um, by doing by getting rid of guns. And so I think that it's it's a more nuanced conversation than that. Um, and ultimately, I mean, really, what it comes down to is I think we have to meet people where they're at. Um, nobody's going to have the perfect platform, but I think what we present to people is the best solution for moving forward. Um, so meeting people where they're at and having those conversations about how we can accomplish the things that we are in line with um, is really what it's all about. You know, I, I ask this question because coming from a major metropolitan area like Washington, D.C., it's, <clears throat> it's still not very progressive. It's still very corporate, you know, focused, but it's far more progressive than central Pennsylvania and other areas like this. You think about running candidates here. Mm -hmm to even make a, to make it a value you've got to somehow or another get past some of these sensibilities within the local community you know i watched as bernie sanders i know he's not a green but i watched as bernie sanders got taken to task mm -hmm. for talking about the differences of vermont gun ownership and the nuances of that and this is kind of a position mm -hmm. you're taking as well which is in my opinion very logical because my family, our family out here, mm -hmm. is very, very tied to not gun culture like running around shooting up by yeehaw, right, 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 but right. a very, very different mindset that is very foreign when you consider the typical violence that we see. How would you recommend a candidate run? I mean, obviously, this is not a new subject. Obviously, this is not a new challenge for a progressive or a left group that has obviously got a peace plank to everything that they do, and at the same time trying to address the very real concern that the nation has for, for guns and so forth, gun yeah. safety. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I really do think that it's about looking at the holistic approach. Um, and. And you can talk about having safeties in place and, and smart gun control that um, that that takes into account like the kinds of guns that are causing violence, the places where guns are being sold that are causing violence. Um, but really talking more about the culture that leads to that. Um, and in many cases, it, it really is more about um, the, the hatred and division in our country that's really causing this violence, and, and the guns are absolutely part of that, but there's there's so many more factors in this. There's mental health contributions. There's, absolutely. I mean, it's, there, there's so many more things that factor into it. And so if you're not also talking about those issues, um, 
and really talking about those issues more, um, you're not solving the problem. So. so do you feel like within the state of Pennsylvania that the Green Party has made strides in terms of reaching voters um, through, because obviously as a grassroots organization, you're working on your platform here. Mm -hmm. So your platform is specific to your grassroots. Do you feel like the um, Green Party of Pennsylvania has made the kind of strides you'd like to see? Uh, where are your struggles? Where are some of your strengths? It's always an ebb and flow. Um, this year was rough for us, and I think a lot of that had to do with um, the fear of Trump, the deep fear of Trump. Um, people are really, really, really scared of, of having Republicans in office, and they think the only way to keep that from happening is to vote blue. Um, and that and I think a lot of people would even admit to you that that does they don't even think that means change um, but they're just so scared of the alternative and so I think a lot of what we fight against is just helping people to overcome that fear um, and see that there is hope and that there are other options so in a place like Pennsylvania where you're obviously in minority status as it were mm -hmm. how do you partner with these other groups because obviously if you do get elected you're going to have to govern together mm -hmm. somehow or another. Mm -hmm. How does the Green Party of Pennsylvania see uh, joint governance in a um, in a non, yeah. <laughs> you know, in, a, in a, a true honest to God melting pot of, uh, you know, you've got independence, you've got hardcore, you know, these colors don't run conservatives, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, on yeah. and on and on. How, how does one govern, how does one build the case that Greens can govern? I think it's important. Yeah, I, well, and I think that when you talk to people one on one, we find so much more overlap between <coughs> our beliefs than than anything else. Um, and so, having those one on one conversations, um, really, really interacting with people to find out what they truly believe in, what they truly want, as opposed to what they've been like, what they're quoting back and forth because it's what they what they know um, and what they've been told is the party line. Um, when you really have the conversations about what we're trying to accomplish and stay focused focused on that, um, which I think is one of the things that the Greens really focus on. Um, we're not we're not just quoting a party line. I mean, we do have ours, but um, we're really, our party line is we want to accomplish these things. This is how we're going to do it. Let's talk about how we can do this together. Um, in the German and the Green Party, they talk about not left, not right, and forward. Um, and that's, that's something that I, I like to keep in mind when I'm thinking about the Green Party here, that really, like, we're trying to think about how we can move forward. It's not about this division to left or right. How can we talk? How can we find our common ground so that we can move forward? I don't have to agree with you on everything. Let's find those points of commonality because it, it's really, we have to save our world. Yes. It's just not enough time. No, I appreciate There's not enough time for us that, to just keep arguing. No, that's a great perspective. I'm going to keep filming this. This is really powerful. I'm really enjoying this. I, I think that it's really instructive for other people not just you know like just people in general to understand that how, how you can build consensus how you can build an understanding of shared values and shared priorities and and really gain perspective of what everyone else is thinking this is a wonderful exercise i'm really enjoying it uh, uh, tremendously okay, so we're and you're doing a good job leading it so i want to thank you thank you very much i appreciate it Chris. <clears throat> mr david hey i'm doing well sir so tell me, what exactly are you doing here at this conference? Uh, I am on the communications team here in Pennsylvania, and I'm an elected green here in Pennsylvania. Um, one of the things I'm going to do a little bit is uh, workshop on our communications division here of the Green Party of Pennsylvania. Um, most of our outreach communications that we have, we control the social media platforms and very, our basic messaging. Very, very good. So what do you think about this? I mean, do, 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 what kind of impact does the local platform have for you all, the, the state platform. What sort of an impact does the state platform have on the locals? Yes, I mean, like, like I, I typically hear when I talk to p folks about the Green Party, because you're decentralized, because you're a grassroots organization, that the national platform is more of a guidepost, that the state platforms are really what drives the behavior at each state level and, and so forth. I mean, talk to me a little bit about the difference between the state platform and the national platform. Well, I'm not sure if you know this, but uh, the Green Party is actually decentralized, as you said. With that respect, we're actually 50 separate parties 
all acknowledged as the official Green Party of that state. So every state party is actually its own individual autonomous group. In that state. And, um, you know, we have the Green Party in what, over 30 states officially uh, unrecognized and some more, and uh, ballot status in uh, 45 or 43 or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, so it makes us a little bit, that's what makes us bottom up, not top down. And so when you hear that the Green Party of uh, the United States national platform, you know, it is all encompassing. It's this really bring umbrella that just tries to describe our basic values. And it may be a, a, a long explanation of that, but it's because the Green Party's values encompass so many people and so many other people's values. Right. Yeah. Very, very good, very good. So, Dave, when will you be um, speaking? Uh, probably in a little bit, I think around 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, okay. All right, thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem, man. Okay. And it's face facts. Policing's government. No way around it. Kind of respect for diversity too. Absolutely. About this. Yeah. And anything else in here? It's like a bright and bad. Although we don't want it to be too long. I think those are probably the right back. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything is polished. It'll be changed through. It's funny that you say so much easier when you say to your city. She is. She's so yeah. much better for her people. Isn't she such a good thing? I love her. Yeah, I know what you mean. She's a little jerk face. Oh, wow. You read a bunch there. <laughs> Yes, I most of all the issues in this The only other thing would be over lobbying, but they're not doing that as much money. Uh, that's not that. Yeah. So yeah. regulation, but rather Way down. Down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I grew up there. Now, we did have a fight on our hand in the Senate where we actually switched the, the natural resource oh, they were yeah. directly yeah. going after with the water with the Nestle mm -hmm. plant. I don't think that threat's gone. No. I, my family was there a time before that. They, so we got a pause on the selections. Most of the locals. So the action is to, you know, in fact, we didn't say Penn State, we said upgrade and support legislation to bring in specifically cracking. Penn State wants that. They prefer that. Yeah. So that's that's right. number one. Yeah. And we're saying also to support. Really encroach on water energy usage by the consumer development and try to underground especially Yes, I am capturing you there, dear sir. Okay. I folks money in the school rather than the school. And a stadium okay. big money for the school. And they want more just not that many regulations for those folks, which aren't the most time. So you had a big office. So we finish up in about six minutes, right? Okay? If we could all take just a moment to kind of share out where we got so far. I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, that'd be great. Now, we don't have to. Get me going. I said, usually, don't get We're starting. We'll come to you then. All right, so we can take just a second to share out what we got to so far. I'm going to collect these.
and then I need people to join me on core team to continue writing these things that I was writing for January. <laughs> Here's my lovely recruitment statement. Um, core team needs volunteers for this, but also for other things. So if you are interested in working on this, or if you're just logistically minded and want to work on website state base, finding people for membership, um, like any of that kind of nitty gritty day to day work, I would love to have you on our team. Join your team. We really need it. We meet, um, we meet once a month. We meet the second Tuesday of every month um, online. So really could use the help. Sign up. I will get you on board. Okay. I'll send you a friend suggestion from somebody. Dale? No. Dale. Former sister. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm from her sister. I think he's in a former sister. So my my two ones. girls are greens, and uh, the older one is pretty busy, but the younger one's just getting involved. And she wrote, voted for the first time this last election. All fired up. Anybody want to start? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I wrote it on election reform. Uh, it's called Underneath Progressive Democracy. So my description is um, the election process in PA is biased towards the major two parties who both accept corporate funding to make a change will be major reform. Um, action statement, any finished first past the post, stop super PACs, open it and or abolish the primaries, auto voter registration, and paper validated plans. So the title is Freedom to Learn and Progress. And the uh, subject is um, higher education, free tuition, higher education. I would say hi, I'm Beverly now. I'm going to ask you some questions about what you like to learn. What do you like to learn? They tell me why. Ah, that's great. Did your mom or dad go to college? Ah, did they pay for it or would they like to have gone to college? Would you like to go to college? Did you know that today many college students have to take loans to go to college in order to <coughs> learn? Then they have to pay back all that money and that's really hard. Did you know that in some states like New York, you don't have to pay for it in school? It's free, just like your public school that you go to now. I want that to happen in Pennsylvania so that when you go to college, you don't have to worry. Um, the action step is we support and we introduce a in the legislature that ensures education in PA state schools. PA residents, this includes technical education, year degree programs, associate degree programs, and master's programs. And the values of grassroots democracy, social justice, community based economic status, and respect for Who's up next? Okay. Oh, I'm sitting right next to it. I got it. <laughs> um, well, I had uh, one thing with school enrichment programs. Um, and it seems to be that public schools uh, especially need to provide the after school programs, tutoring, and other sports and activities for all grades K through 12. I had this when I was in school 45 years ago. I come back to Philadelphia. None of this is, is here for these children. So um, I would like to see that back. Um, as far as the action, I don't, uh, voting for an increase in the school budget, trying to uh, get the after school programs and tutoring being mandatory for the public schools to provide this tutoring for each school, public school to get that on the ballot so that the people can vote on it. I think that uh, I think it's grassroots democracy. I think it's social justice and equal opportunity. I think it's community-based economics um, because I would like to see that these things do not affect the parents. They're paying out the nose for these after-school programs mm -hmm. for their children, and they should not have to do that. I don't think. Um, and the respect for uh, diversity is personal and global responsibility, and I think it's community-based economics as well. Oh, my second one. Oh, I'm sorry, I got two. Um, uh, the uh, legalization of uh, for legal gun and ammunition insurance. And my, my description of this is that my car promises me transportation, but in the event of an accident, I have to have license, registration, and insurance to cover any injury or death. A gun only promises injury or death. So what they should 
license, registration, and insurance to cover some catastrophic costs. To bury someone, someone in the hospital, a gun owner gets falsely accused or someone steals their gun. The gun owners need to have a, some skin in this game because the laws are there to protect their right to carry arms. But every time a, uh, something happens, they just buy more guns and they don't contribute to the solution. So if they had to insure their weapons, the insurances, uh, everything could be double checked. It could be a secondary background check, uh, evaluations. If you talk about the mentally uh, ill people are getting guns, have them have a psychological evaluation as part of their insurance policy. Uh, people who are coming back from the war, bringing guns back, make sure that they are, uh, their guns are insured. And maybe the insurance companies won't have to insure assault weapons. That might put a ban on, uh, you know, not trying to ban anybody actively, but passively. If you can't get the insurance for these deadly bullets, then your, your assault weapon is a collector's item. So, and that's fine. So, um, so I would like to craft or draft a bill describing, outlining the need for this type of passive method of gun control. And I would like to put that on the ballot to let people see if they would vote on it or not. Okay, I want to go next because mine is related to your first one. Oh, okay. So, I work on this with Nino. It's Local Community Oversight of Law Enforcement. Um, it's under peace and nonviolence. The description is policing has uh, been determined to be necessary, but if it isn't trusted, it isn't effective. If it isn't uniformly applied, the community will not have confidence and will not participate effectively. Police training must be evidence-based with priority to um, de-escalation. Um, there must be adequate resources for police. Um, and I didn't finish that line, but basically that was because if you send one person into a dangerous situation, they're going to be more likely to react without thinking than if you send them in with backup and enough people to actually handle that situation. So we can fill that out later, but that's basically the rationale for that. Um, current veteran preference should be should end. However, it's a national thing. So one of the um, we have a something in our action statement that can kind of counteract that. Veteran issues are that military experience is not experience for law enforcement in a community. It's not the same thing. It's not the same skill set needed. Um, and veterans often have trauma that's not conducive to community policing. And you hire them right when they come back, there isn't a limit of time to try to determine if that exists. Okay, so our actions would be departments can hire who they want, and, and we want them to do that because they're the ones with the knowledge of what education and everything is needed for law enforcement. But they can't place an officer in a community without the community agreement. So if it's somebody who has a history of racism or violence or anything like that, then the community can say no. So they wouldn't actually do the hiring, but they could say no to anybody that they want to place to be police in their community. Um, community, there would be a community police coalition that meets regularly to address the community needs, policing needs. We would abolish mandatory sentencing and three strikes laws um, because no matter how effective the police can become, that just makes everything more violent and worse in the community. We would use those saved funds because if you're not incarcerating every other person that you meet on the street, then you're saving money, right? And we would take that saved funds and put it into youth programs and um, possibly some other things like some effective opioid type programs and stuff. So. That's where that money would go, so you would not have to go beg the people to raise their taxes to pay for your programs. That's what we would get it from. Um, we would require an increased level of education for police, minimum four years of college in in the law enforcement. Criminal justice law enforcement. Yeah. And that will help to solve the 18-year-olds who go off to war and come home and become police, because if they have four years to cool off, then they and also to actually learn 
real evidence-based policing, you also have four years for any kind of trauma to show itself. So that would kind of stop that, you know, hot-headed young people with no real, you know, without the real training that they need. Uh, or the background. They get training, and the training is evidence-based, but they need to have the background first. Let me finish and then yeah. I'll come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we should have them in the community for 10 years before they supervise the people who are going to be in those communities, rather than be in the community one year and be on a desk the rest of it and work their way up that way. So they would The action statement is uh, provide more funding for agencies and promotion of their services to intervene as soon as possible to relieve the causes of domestic abuse from the abuser to the victims and encourage them also to, in those in the situation, to ask for help. Um, but it's, it's kind of like we were talking about uh, before, instead of having uh, unemployment Center instead of having family services and all that, it's more the proactive. How do we how do we know what's going on in the home? And how do we get them to ask for help sooner? And whereas before the other was kind of punitive, and it's kind of like, oh, I got caught, and not it's not addressing the symptoms. It's not addressing the root cause of why those symptoms are happening. In what's supposed to be a, a safe, our safest environment, at least in our family. So, just kind of an awkward way of kind of getting to that. It's kind of a scramble, and that's what it is. This is for K through 12. Um, learning centers, not prisons. All students, regardless of income, should have access to one on one tutoring once a week, plus clubs, field trips internships. Students need not repeat grades or go into special ed. For K to, K to 12, all students need to be given academic support and enrichment, including field trips, guest speakers. <clears throat> Greens could provide learning centers in all public schools. These could be refurbished shipping containers, which they're doing in California. They have many shipping containers on the high school campuses for the science programs but all kids need help in some area. Retired teachers could supervise these programs, AmeriCorps volunteers, high school students, and peer tutors could be trained to tutor students. Um, these students also need clubs, field trips, sports for all students. I was a high school teacher for 13 years and my kids that had low academic achievement could not play sports. If you didn't have a C average, even if you were the best quarterback in town, you could not play. That's the fault of the school, it's not the fault of the child. And it, when the kids get one-on-one -on -one tutoring once a week, they catch up. They're not stupid, they're behind. And to, in the state of Texas, they just spent $2 billion on all these students that repeated the grades. Kids don't need to repeat grades. It's been shown by psychologists that it definitely hurts children to do that. It does not help them. That could be prevented if students got academic enrichment while they were in school. Almost every community college, state college and university has a learning center. Why don't they have them at, from K through 12? So. That's okay. All right. Sure. Uh, our title is Enforcing Sustainable Environmental Stewardship. And it falls under the ecology pillar. Uh, Pennsylvania's environment has been degraded and remains threatened by unre unregulated pollution. Public resources have been depleted without restoration. Health and well-being are diminished as the extracted fossil fuel industries continue production unabated. Our action against this would be support and create legislation to ban fracking, develop legislation to support the transition to 100% renewable energy usage, support enforcement of this legislation and all environmental legislation. So it should be a lot more granular in terms of what that legislation is, but that's like an overview. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, guys. And thanks to all of you guys. Seriously, this is the most work we've done, like in-depth work on the platform and the year that we've been working on stuff. Mm -hmm. So kind of 
very, very grateful. Join me, sign up. Seriously, we need more help. So now we have to make these loadable in January. Um, and we, we want to flesh out any of the ones that we didn't get to today. Um, Grace? So do you... Not to fully flesh it out as much, but do we want to come up with actual... I don't want to say legislation because we've used that word about 20 times, but do we want to come up with something where we can run a candidate and that candidate goes, this is exactly what we're going to do? Yeah. Yes. That's okay. Um, our, so not exactly what we're going to do, but what we have in our, what we have in our like front page platform is probably going to be a little more brief than that, but we would like to over time attack white pages to that, um, okay. that can be more detailed, uh, that candidates could just take word for word and use as their campaigning. And I mean, we don't have to have people creating stuff from scratch. I mean, you know, Neil did a ton of work on his campaign creating stuff. Uh, I, back in 2015, did a ton of work creating stuff. And we should repurpose those for um, Does the Green Party propose many things towards change.org? Um, no, and what I would tell you about change.org is um, it doesn't actually go anywhere, they just are harvesting your emails, addresses to the um, But, yeah, so, um, I mean, you can look into that more and see if it's worth, you think it's worth doing, but for the most part, petitions that are online are really just about getting your email address. So um, they can send you something to try to convince you. Right. Or they can use it on someone's campaign. Bob Rush, caught you. So introduce yourself, Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny Isaacs of the Green Wave team of the Green, Wave, Green Party of Pennsylvania. And you are also the person that hit me up and talked to me about running for Senate. I sure am. And I hope you will, in a couple of years, have more uh, freedom in your personal life to allow you to do Absolutely. Say yes to that well, I, I wanted to thank you on camera, for real, for everything. And this was a wonderful time. I'm going to close down this broadcast and just wanted to make sure I caught you on here. Thank you again. And uh, we'll talk soon. It was great. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Absolutely. All right. Bye bye, everybody.